Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to solar and solar plus storage installations. Today, we're focusing in on some more grounding stuff. We've been doing some grounding videos and grounding and bonding. And today we're gonna to be looking at sizing main bonding jumpers. And we're gonna put this into context for our PV systems. We'll show you this, how it relates to our our PV systems specifically, and kind of how to how to apply these different code sections um, when you do have main bonding jumpers that you need to install. So first off, we've done some definition videos, or we did a video on definitions on different types of grounding circuits or different grounding conductors, and I highly recommend if you need to uh, go and look at that. It's super easy to get confused and start using the slightly wrong terms with when we're talking about our grounding conductors and it's easy to do and you know to this day I'm always slowing down talking about which types of jumpers or which type of conductors we're using um, you know whether they're jumpers or equipment grounding conductors or grounding electrodes so all those things it's important to make sure that you you feel like you have a good foundation on so you know, we did that video with that intention of helping with those definitions. But in this video, we are going to be looking at main bonding jumper uh, and system bonding jumper and 250.28. And so that's where we're going to get referenced. And, you know, quite honestly, we are going to connect as we're showing on this screen here. We're going to connect to systems that have an existing main bonding jumper installed. And so and a lot of residential or and commercial systems you're going to come in and you're going to do a interconnection with a with a existing utility system or existing um, utility feed to a building and that main bonding jumper will be there and this isn't something you have to think about in other cases you may be installing a new service or as we're going to wrap up this video with we're going to show you if you're doing a supply side connection all of a sudden you were having to do a main bonding jumper and you need to make sure that you size that properly. So we definitely see these applications come in. So uh, don't think that, oh, I'm just interconnecting to buildings with that already have utility services, so I don't need to worry about main bonding jumpers. There will be some times, especially with our supply side connections that you uh, absolutely do need to, to size these. So let's look at that language, 250.28D. And so you can see the size of our, um, our main bonding jumper and system bonding jumpers. It tells us that you're gonna meet D1 through D3. So this is a great spot. Hit pause in the video, read through these. I don't, I'm gonna try not to read you uh, code word for word because you can read it just as well yourself. But once, once you go through and you've read that, the general requirement you can see right there it's going to push us into this table in 250.102 so table 250.102 c1 i'll show you that here in a second i wanted to show you all three of these because it's interesting because they all can come into play for our pv systems and so number two that talks about a service with more than one enclosure so if we are doing a supply side connection so we are taking our PV system and we're connecting to those service conductors. So we're ahead of the main, the main circuit breaker in our system. Then we would have, basically we're gonna have this service with more than one enclosure because we'd have the disconnect for our PV system that's gonna have the overcurrent device in it. We're gonna do a main bonding jumper inside there. We're also gonna have it over at the utility side. And so we have these two locations where we're gonna have this main bonding jumper. So it's important, again, to understand this is where we could have these in our PV systems. The separately drive system is another interesting one. As we're doing more and more energy storage systems, we're seeing isolation transformers. So by having these transformers in place, we are thereby creating separately drive systems. Even in a grid, you know, a grid direct PV system where there's no storage involved, but you are installing say a 480 volt inverter going to a 208 service, you put a transformer in there to, to do that voltage transformation, you've just created a separately drive system. 
And so we are going to have these requirements around main bonding jumpers. We've done a lot of material lately around transformers and those kinds of things. So I uh, encourage you to take a look at our site. Uh, we've written some stuff, we put videos out there. So there's some good information, more and more getting out there about transformers. And so I encourage you to take a look at that. It's gonna be a little bit beyond what this video gets into, but just understand these separately drive systems with the transformers, this is gonna come into play as well. What you'll notice in all of these is, well, in both two and three, they give you some language and they end up pointing you back up to 28D1, which ultimately points you to 102C1. So that's why I'm gonna just focus in on that part of it. We'll look at the table and you know how to apply that. And then at the end, we'll show you, show you a uh, system and kind of those where those circuits are gonna land. So here is 250, 102 c1 this is the table straight out of code so this is you know courtesy of, of nfpa this is what we've what we're going to have and what you'll notice is the way that it's titled it's going to talk about or excuse me the way that we're going to apply this table so you see the title up there the 250 102 the the conductors that we're doing and then below that it says size of largest ungrounded conductor or equivalent area for parallel conductors so 28 D1 and D2 they talk about, um, D2 talks about parallel conductors, so go take a, a look at that as well uh, if you have parallel conductors in your service, but we'll focus in on just, just not parallel runs right now. But what it's gonna say is the size of that largest ungrounded conductor, you're gonna have a certain size, and then either copper or aluminum, depending on what's the what material is coming in, and then you're gonna have a size of your bonding jumper corresponding to that over there on the on the right hand side. So if you have a two gauge or smaller service or um, you know, coming the conductors coming into that uh, to that disconnecting means if it's two or smaller copper then it's going to tell you that you need an eight gauge copper uh, bonding jumper. And as those conductors get larger and larger, so do the bonding jumpers. And so it makes sense when you think about it, we're talking about service conductors coming into our service disconnects and our, our gear. And those do not, that's going to be our first point of overcurrent protection. And so as those conductors get larger and larger coming in from the service, that means we have more available fault current that are going to be able to, if there is a fault, they're going to have the, these bigger and bigger wires are going to be able to carry more and more current. So we want to make sure that we're bonding everything. We're bonding it with large enough wire so that if there is a fault, we don't evaporate that wire and then lose that connection to the earth. So that's a, you know, what we're trying to accomplish and what we're, how we're gonna size those conductors. So let's put that into play here real quick on a PV system. So I'm gonna show you a supply side connection and really gonna focus in on that, that main bonding jumper. Again, I don't have it called out here in this image, but it's that neutral to ground bond is what we're looking at in both the main panel and the PV system disconnect. This as well, this is a, I know a big, huge topic for a lot of people. We've done lots of material on this on go look for 705.11 material. Uh, we talk about this in great, great detail in many places. So um, really just wanna focus on the sizing of those more than anything right now. So with the utility, likely that utility connection was already there, that neutral to ground bond, that main bonding jumper was already there. But if it weren't for some reason, then the service conductors coming into that panel are going to, we're gonna use the size of those conductors, go look at that table 250.102C1, and that's how we're going to size what that connection, what that conductor needs to look like. On our PV system, you leave the main service panel, you go to that PV system disconnect, we have a neutral to ground bond there. Again, 705.11, we talk about why, that, why, you're, why that's required, all that kind of stuff but we need to size that main bonding jumper. And that is gonna be dictated by the size of those conductors coming in from the connection into that disconnect. So we have a certain size conductors and that's gonna be dictating what, how we're gonna size that main bonding jumper. So it's relatively straightforward once you get into it, but understanding what those are. And then throw in parallel conductors, gets a little bit more complex. Uh, in terms of what those requirements are, but the rules are relatively straightforward even then. So understanding how big the conductors that are coming in uh, really 
is what's going to dictate that ultimately that main bonding jumper size. Okay, so I hope that was helpful on that aspect. It's definitely something that we see in our PV systems and you know sizing those conductors. This is material that we pulled out of the 2023 NEC requirements for PV systems, a, a nine hour course that we have available on our website. So highly encourage you to take a look at that if there's other code topics that you'd like to learn more about. Uh, and you know we go through those and get really in depth on many topics for PV systems. And then if there's questions or comments, always love to hear from folks. So feel free to reach out to us. You can leave a comment here on the video. Uh, but if you, you know, have a question on this or other topics, feel free to reach out. If you have a specific, a different topic that you want to hear us talk about, always love to hear that as well. So thanks a lot. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.